So we're going to jump right in with the thicker packet. We're going to skip all the way to page 10, and then we'll talk about the syllabus later on today. But jump to page 10 in the real big packet. Page 10 in the big packet. So just to make sure that everybody's in the right place, this is Math 117, Mathematical Problem Solving. My name is Ian. And uh, if it's your first semester here, welcome to GCC. If you're a returning student, welcome back. We're glad to have you back. We're going to jump in right here with number one. And uh, can you read number one for us, please? Okay, you can stop right there. Thank you. We're moving on to number two. Ricky. Reduce the mathematics of vertical PC example. Uh, following flavor of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate. Go ahead and fill in the blanks right now. First choice, second choice, third choice. Vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. Everybody's committed to an answer, yes? Okay, so we've all got V and S and C there in some order. You don't need to write the whole words. We'll move on to three. Go ahead, Sue. Okay, so plurality is what we think of when we talk about elections. You vote for who you think is the best and whoever gets the most votes wins, and that's it. We're going to do a little bit more than that, but we'll start with this plurality idea. So raise your hand if vanilla was your top choice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll count myself as nine. Vanilla got nine first place votes. Raise your hand if chocolate was your top choice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Raise your hand if strawberry was your top choice. One, two. OK, so uh, who's our winner according to this thing called the plurality method? Vanilla. The most number of first place votes is vanilla. And that's it. Let's move on to number four. Could you read four, please? OK, so we want to know if vanilla, vanilla won. But we want to know if they got a majority of the first place votes. What do we need to calculate before we can answer that question? How many votes did we have? Okay, nine and seven and two. Eighteen. So 18 was the total number of voters. You have to have more than half in order to have a majority. Did vanilla have a majority? No. It was right there at that halfway point. Nine out of 18 is not quite a majority. So we can say nine out of 18 is not a majority. What's the least number of votes vanilla needed to get a majority is 10. Just a little bit more than half is fine. So part B, uh, we just answered. How many votes did we need in this class for a majority? 10. 10 out of the 18 of us needed to say the same thing. Moving on to part C, how many votes are required to have a majority in a class with 49 students? So 25 is one possible answer. Feels like 20, like it's right around there. Maybe it's 24, maybe it's 26. Do we all buy it's 25? 24, yeah, I mean, like taking half of 49 seems reasonable. So you cut this guy in half, and that gets you 24.5. To be a majority, you need more than that. So 25 is our answer. We buy that? That's you cut it in half, and then you need more. What if the class had 50 students? Cutting that in half gives me 25, and that means we need 26 to have a majority, right? More than half. Okay, moving around this table in the front, could you read number five, please? If we are using the Okay. 
Okay, so when you ordered first, second, and third vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, that is called a preference ballot. We know the word ballot, that's what you turn in at an election, and you have given us your complete preference list, right, by telling us what your first choice was, what was second, and what was third. Now what we're going to do is mush together everybody's ballots into this thing called the preference schedule. So the very first column here, these are the people that think chocolate is the best, and vanilla is their second choice, and finally strawberry was their last choice. So can you circle one of these columns that represents you? Each of you belongs in one and only one of those columns. So find your first choice in the top row, second choice in the second row, and third choice. Everybody find themselves somewhere. And now we're going to group everybody together. Raise your hand if you were the first column. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Second column, raise your hand. Chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. There's zero there. If we were making this chart from scratch, I wouldn't even bother listing that column. You only have to list the outcomes that people actually voted. The next one, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, is that, no, five. Uh, next one, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. One, two, three, I'll count myself as four. This is the right answer, by the way, in case you were wondering. Uh, fifth column, uh, strawberry, then chocolate, then vanilla, one. Strawberry, vanilla, chocolate, one. How can we check that we got everybody accounted for? And add all those guys up. We're hoping for the same 18. Did it work? Super. So we still have the 18 people that we had before. And that's just a quick check. Some of those numbers is 18. To be clear, this doesn't mean that one person voted chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and one person voted the next thing, right? This is everybody all smushed together, grouped together, based on your preferences. So that, that first column is worth a whole lot more than the last column, right? Seven of you are in that first column, only one person in the last column. Okay, so that's called the preference schedule. We're gonna take a quick detour right now after doing some of the basic voting stuff to take a look at just a couple of highlights of the syllabus. You're gonna read through this document over the weekend, bring back any questions you might have on Monday. So there are only two pieces of this document. It's a long document. There's only two pieces that I want to talk about right now. First one is a mistake. It's in the office hours on the very first page. See the times there? In the middle, it says Wednesday. I think yours says 1 to 1.30. That's wrong. In fact, that's right now. So cross that off. I'm not in my office at this moment. And change it to 2.20 to 2.50. Everybody see that? 1 to 1.30. Change it to 2.20 to 2.50. Okay, the only other thing I want to talk about now for the syllabus is the textbook, so I'm going to borrow this for just a second. Here is the textbook. This is the eighth edition of something called Excursions in Modern Mathematics. I suspect they have it in the bookstore. If you like searching online for things, I suspect you can find it online, and you have a little bit of time to get this book in your hands because we do have a copy of it sitting in the math studio and in the library, so if you don't have it yet and you want to do your homework, you can go find the book in one of those two places. That said, uh, how much did you pay for this book, if I can ask? I'll park. I want to say like 120, one, no, more, less. Rented for 140. Okay. Okay. So this book is really expensive. Here's the deal. The seventh edition, one edition prior to this book, is much less expensive, right? As soon as the new edition comes out, the old editions become like really, really cheap, like less than 20 bucks. So if you are willing to do a little bit of work, you can buy the older edition. And a little bit of work means, thank you, uh, taking one of the handouts that I have right here, which has the semester's homework assignments for the other book. And so just instead of doing the homework that's in the packet, you're gonna do the homework that's here. It's very little work for you to do to make the connection between the old edition and the new edition, okay? So I've got several of these up here. If you're interested in um, getting the old edition, let me know and I'll give you one of these and I can make more if we want more. Any questions about old versus new? Okay. All right, so the other thing, this is not on any of your handouts, but I wanna take a quick look at the math course flowchart and make sure that everybody's in the right spot. You are currently here. 
and I suspect that most of you are here because this class is the first one in the flow chart that gets college level math credit and meets the requirements for our liberal arts associates degree. So this could be the last math class you take if you're a liberal arts major. This will get you that credit. That said, you'll notice that this course does not have any follow-up course. There's no place to go mathematically after this course. There's no problem solving two. If you are in a major where you might be headed to more math, then this is not the course for you. There's this whole other track over here. Presumably you took introductory algebra here or you got credit for it from high school or something. You could then continue on taking intermediate algebra here. This is not a math credit bearing course, but that would open the door to either stats or college algebra. I'll put these in red. These are both credit bearing courses down here. So you can see that going here is, that's not what I meant, going here is two classes or two classes to get to that desired credit bearing course. Whereas right now you're here, one class, it is the shortest distance. But again, if you're in a major that has any math in its future, uh, there's nowhere to go from here. Right? So I'm not saying I want any of you to leave, but I'm telling you that this is not the appropriate place for people who are majoring in anything mathy. Science, engineering, computers, any of that stuff. Business. If you aren't sure whether or not this is the right place for you, talk to me right after class, okay? All right. So, coming back to the big packet, we'll move on to the next page. And we'll take a look at number eight. And uh, we'll go around to this table right here for our next reader. Could you read eight, please? Okay, so again, this thing right here is called a preference schedule, thank you. And the first question says, how many voters are there? What do we need to do with this table to figure out how many voters there are? Add up the top numbers. So let's add them all up. What do we get? One vote for 37, anybody else? Is that is that good? Yes? Okay, 37 voters all together. Part B, how many votes are needed to get a majority? Don't say out loud this one, but just do it. Do some calculation to figure out how many votes we need for a majority. Okay, now let's say it out loud. What's the answer here? Say again? 19, anybody else? How much is half of this number? 18.5 is half. Majority is more than that. 19 is right. Yes? Okay, next part. We want to know who wins using the plurality method, and we're going to show all of the calculations. So, really common wrong way to answer this question. Uh, if we're looking plurality, what's the only row that matters? Top row because plurality just means first place votes, and in fact, everything below that first row is useless as far as plurality goes, it's just first place votes. Now, don't look at the numbers in that very top row, but just looking here, which letter appears the most? C. So it is compelling to say, oh, C wins. C is there twice. But if you do that, you're ignoring the fact that each column represents potentially many voters. And this first column is just a single A, but really how many people think A is the best? 14, and it doesn't count the same as these other C's in here, all right? So you really do have to look. You're looking at that row, but you need to account for the fact that there are multiple voters in each row. So we're going to write here A, B, C, and D. And we're just going to keep track of how many first place votes they each have. So A only appears once in that yellow uh, row. How many votes was that? That's 14. Now we're looking for B. B only appears once up there, and how many votes is that? That's four. Okay, somebody we haven't heard from yet. C appears twice. Altogether, how many votes did C get? 11 is right. Everybody see that? 
So you got 10 votes in the second column, one more vote in the last column. So altogether 11, yes? The questions on that 11? It's mysterious if you don't know how to do it, easy if you do. Ask a question if it's mysterious. Okay, and then finally, uh, D. How many votes did D get first place? Eight. What is a good way to check that everybody's here? As we add them, what are we expecting? You still better have the 37. So you make sure that, uh, that you get 37 when you add up all those voters. So who is our winner? A, B, C, or D? A is the winner because A has the most first place votes. Yes? Okay, part D talks about listing the complete ranking, which means we're not just looking for who won, but we also want to know who was the second and who was the third and who was last. It's a very natural way to do this. Well, we say A is, A is the best, that's easy, but who do the voters like second best? C, because has the second most votes, yes? C is second place. Who's third place? D. And then finally, the least popular up here is B. Any questions on finding the complete ranking? Everybody gets listed based on the order in which they appeared. Okay. So far, nothing new. In fact, we've got a lot of useless data in that table because we only cared about that first row. Uh, let's go to number nine and we'll continue here. Can you read nine, please? Thank you. We'll keep going around at that table. Can we read the next part? Okay, so um, uh, when it comes time to vote for president in 2016, how many candidates will be on the ballot? Roughly. Three or four? So not just two? Yeah, so, so is that two? Okay, so there's more than two candidates that are up for election, right? The fact is... We all know that in 2016, one of two people is going to win that presidency. It's either going to be the Republican candidate or the Democratic candidate. Yes? I don't think I'm going out on a limb here. Right? There are going to be a bunch of other people on the ballot. There might be like eight or ten people. Right? There's a lot of different parties. But because of the way that we vote, a lot of people will say, well, even if I support the Green Party uh, the most, and even if I think that's the best candidate, I'm not going to throw my vote away. I'm not going to waste my vote on somebody that has no chance of winning, right? Is there anybody in here that has, that has thought that process out and has not voted the way they thought? I've got a couple of people nodding their heads. There's something less than desirable about a voting system which discourages you from voting with your heart, right? I want you to vote the way that you feel, not the way that you think is going to have an impact because the person that you really want to win has no chance. And this plurality method encourages a two-party system. It is why we basically have a two-party system for presidential elections. It's not this way in, a, in all other countries because different voting methods don't encourage this two-party system. So let's come down here to number 10. I'll say that 10 is a very common test question that I ask. In the election above, how might some members have changed their vote to create a result more to their liking? And we're going to be very specific here. So let's come up here and take a look at this uh, election. Again, who was the winner? A was the winner. Who was the second place? It was C. So C is the closest to winning if A doesn't get the nod, right? So is it possible that we can find, well, let's look at the first column actually. So who did the first column really like? A. But who did everybody else hate? A, right? So all of these people got the worst possible outcome. So any of them would prefer any other outcome, right? So how about we find somebody 
who didn't vote for C already, because C's already got a lot of votes. We want to give C some more votes from some people that really hate A, but didn't vote for C first. So I'm going to cross some stuff off. Uh, these people are happy, so they're not really in the mix. They're not going to change their, mo their mind. They, they got what they wanted. These people right here, uh, they're going to stay with what they want. We're going to try to get C to win, and they want C to win already. So we're not going to look at them. And we're not, not going to look at these guys either because they also think C is the best. I'm going to take one of those other two columns, and I'm going to manipulate the vote to try to get C to win. So uh, which of the columns is worth more? Not that it much matters. Yeah, the, this D column has eight people in it. So let's just pick those eight people. Uh, yeah, that's true. They do like C more than the other column. So looking at those eight people, is there a way they could change their vote to get a better outcome? Sure. Who would they put first to change the winner of the election? They put C first. Now, who do you think they're going to put second? D is really who they want, so they're probably going to put D as high up as possible. And then next one would be B, and then they still hate A, so we're going to put A at the bottom. And if we do that, then all of a sudden, C has how many more votes? Eight more votes which brings them up to 19, which is a pretty convincing victory. So that column of people, if they know going into this, you know, there's these Gallup polls beforehand, and so you can watch the news and get a sense of, of which candidates have a chance and which ones really don't. And if they know that D, which is their favorite, has no chance, and they know that A looks like they're going to pull this thing out, they might just change their votes, right? If they think only A or C has a chance, and they really hate A, they might just bump C up to the top of their list. So let's just write that in number 10. So the eight folks voted. OK, somebody remind me. What did it say before? D, C, B, and then A? Could vote. And we're going to change it to the new order, which was C, and then D, and then B, and then A. which would make who the winner? C, the winner. All right, any questions on that? OK, so I've already bashed the plurality method a bit here, because I think it leads to a two-party system, which is where we are in this country. So if I'm going to bash that, then I need to provide an alternative, something different. And it seems like, well, there isn't anything else we could do because you just vote for who you think is the best, and then whoever gets the most votes wins. What could be more democratic than that? So let's talk about number 12. Uh, we'll go back to the gentleman in the hat. Can you read 12, please? Okay, thank you. And in the white shirt. Okay, so the idea here is that you start by giving one point for last place and then you work your way up. Okay, now how many points the first place vote is worth depends on how many candidates there are. Four candidates, first place vote is worth four points. But in uh, AP college football, maybe there's 50 different teams that we're ranking. First place would be worth 50. Second place would be 49, all the way down to last place, which is consistently one. OK? So let's go to the next page. This is exactly the same preference schedule we saw before. But what we're going to do now is use this board account method to determine a winner. So let's focus on A first. How many points is a first place vote worth here? It's four. Four candidates, it's worth four points. How many first place votes did A get? It's 14. What am I doing with these two numbers to find how many points they got from those votes? We're going to multiply them. Do you see that? And every single one of those 14 people gave A four points. 
So four fourteens is how many points we have so far. Fifty six plus. But now we've got some votes that we haven't looked at yet. Second place votes. We didn't care about them until now. How much is each second place vote worth? Three is good. And now we're looking in the second row. And we're going to grab all the A's that we see. How many? None. So A gets no points for second place votes. I mean, it, it would get three for each of them, but it doesn't have any. Okay. Next, how many points are worth third place votes? It's two. And how many votes does A have in third place? None. And then last place votes are always worth one. Now I see A four times here. Does that mean A has four of those last place votes? Okay. One, two, three, four. I see four A's. And we gotta go up. Those A's are not just single voters. There's 10 of them, and another eight, and another four, and another one. So we're adding all of those together, 23. Anybody have questions about where that 23 comes from? OK, and so now we do the calculation. Uh, like I said, that's 56 plus another 23. I think that's 79. So A has 79 points. Now I can't tell if 79 points is good enough without doing what? I gotta do the rest. So I want you to divvy up the work in your tables. So one of you do B, somebody else C, and somebody else D. Just one quick uh, highlight. If you look at the first numbers here, they're gonna be the same for all of the calculations. Four, then three, then two, then one. So see what you can get and we'll put answers up here. So there is a nice way to check uh, that you've done the arithmetic right, because it's really not hard, the calculations. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's pretty straightforward. But it's so much arithmetic that, that it's easy to make mistakes and not catch them. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, if you happen to have a calculator handy, add up all four of these numbers. And we'll just wait on one person to do that. <clears throat> Three seventy. OK. So here's the deal. How many candidates were there in this election? Four candidates, right? So let's just look at one particular voter. How many points do they give to the last place person? One. How many do they give to the second to last place person? Two. I'm just going to add up. How many points is one voter worth? To the next person, how many did they give? They give three. And then to the last person, they give four. So every single voter gives 10 points out, yes? How many voters were there? 37. Do we like that 370? I like it a lot. You see that? Everybody gave 10 points. 10 times the 37 voters. This is confirmed here. You might get really unlucky. This isn't surefire. It's probably going to catch errors. But if it happens that you overestimate uh, by like 7 on one of them and underestimate by 7 on another, then it's going to look right even though it's not. But this will catch almost all of the errors unless you're really unlucky. Okay. Uh, so that's what we just did here. 37 voters times 10 points per ballot is the 370. That's our check for the total. Okay, let's get the complete ranking down here. So who is our winner according to this Borda method? It was which one? It was B. B had the most points. And then who is the second place finisher? It was C and then D and then A. So it goes C, uh, B, C, D, and then A. And that's our complete list. B, C, D, and A. So it's a very natural way that we order them, that we rank them. And then in part D, did we have the same winner using this border method as we did for plurality? Who won plurality? A. Who won here? B. In fact, where did A finish in this border method? Dead last. I'm not saying this border method is better than the plurality, but it's given us really different results, right? And so this idea that there's only one way to count the votes and it's just first place or nothing, 
It's just not true. Right? This is just another way to count the votes, and surprise, surprise, it gives us completely different outcome. So it seems like we got to kind of investigate to decide, well, is plurality really the best thing to do now that we see there's other options? So this was a big old no. Okay, just a tiny bit of history about this guy named Borda. Uh, Matt, can you read 14, please? Okay, thank you, and that's a picture of Borda right there on the right. Okay, let's take a look at uh, number 15. 15 talks about the projects, and so we're going we're gonna to introduce this idea of project right now. Um, on the syllabus, the very last page has our calendar. Now, I'm typically going to project this calendar at the start of every class, so you should know that you have this at the very back of the syllabus. And it tells you what we're going to do on any given day. So today is September 3rd. It's class number one. We're covering these sections in the book, and that's the topic. But then over here in the right-hand column is this stuff about projects. So as you can see, there are three different projects that we're going to do throughout the semester, roughly equally spaced. The first project is on voting, and it's going to be assigned uh, a week from today, officially assigned Wednesday coming up. And then it's going to be due on September 24th. I'll return it to you on September 29th in time for you to look over the feedback I give you before the first test. And then it's the same kind of thing for the second and third projects. So let's talk about project number one right now. <clears throat> uh, with 15. Uh, can we go around in green, Jen? Thank you. What are the names of the two voting methods we discussed today? Plurality and the border. Those are two different ways to count the votes. We will see two more next class. Uh, continuing around. Okay, so here's an example, sample topic with four options, just so you see what I'm talking about. Uh, rank the following flavors of ice cream from best to worst. We need four. We had only three that we did in class, but I'm telling you that you're going to do something with four options. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up with some question, and you can do it later on, this will be sometime between now and Monday, our next class. You're going to come up with some question with four options, and you're going to ask people to rank them. Now, I'm happy to print your question out times 17 people and, and spend a couple of minutes in our next class having people vote, and then I will go and gather all of your votes together and give them to you in a nice envelope one week from today. If you don't do that, then you're going to have to print out your own ballots and find some 20 other people that can answer your question and then collect all the stuff on your own, okay? If you want me to do that, then you got to email your question and four options at least three hours before Monday's class. This is me. This is my colleague. Cross her name off. She won't know what you're talking about if you email it to her. So by Monday morning, if you want me to print out and then do this work for you, you just have to get me a question with four topics. Clear? Okay. Um, the actual uh, project itself, I will hand you a paper copy. They're, they're sitting right over here. But I'll give this to you Wednesday next week. So you don't need to worry about exactly what you're supposed to do, aside from between now and Monday morning, coming up with a question and four topics. And what you want to do is try to construct the ballots in such a way that you don't expect one choice to receive a majority of the votes. So try to pick something where it's not going to be like a clear winner, right? Uh, like, uh, hey, uh, Everybody, uh, how long should the weekend be? Uh, seven days, six days, five days, or two days? Okay, so I can probably predict what people are going to say, and it's not going to be a very interesting election to find the winner, okay? I, I think I would do like five-day weekends. Like uh, seven, and then it's just like all the same every day. So you can go to work for two days, and then 
five days off. Any questions on what you're going to do between now and Monday? Yes. So it yeah, could be whatever you want. Some people uh, come up with, you know, like I can predict what some people are going to do, and, and that's fine, and, and just basic questions are okay. But some people I suspect are going to uh, pick a topic that's, that they're very passionate about and, and give you guys something uh, very real to think about, a whole lot less fluffy than my ice cream example. Right? But whatever you want is fine. Okay, so what you are going to do is this voting activity number one, and you're going to work with your neighbors and start reading here with this note. Let's see how far you can get. Go ahead. <laughs> 